Okay, so today we discuss cyclic structure of a permutation. So we start with uh, with a permutation sigma in S n, and um, let's take a particular permutation one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, going to seven, one. Two, six, five, three, four. So um, that's sigma in S seven. So let's look at it. If you want to understand what this permutation does, it makes sense to draw a picture. So let's just draw a picture where we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points, and then. Uh, we can just draw where each point goes. So one goes to seven, uh, seven goes to two, two goes to one, three goes to three, four goes to four, five goes to six, six goes to five. So we get again a graph. So let me denote this graph gamma of sigma. And this is a graph with vertices 1 to n and oriented edge from uh, i to sigma of i. So I remind you that if this is a set of vertices, and in an oriented graph, so edges is some subset of V cross V, and we just take this subset to be a subset of pairs I comma sigma of I for I in the set from one to N. Okay, so we defined certain graph. And then this graph again has a property. So uh, in gamma sigma, uh, for every vertex, there exists a unique edge going in and out. So for every vertex, there is an edge. So if you take a vertex i, then there is an edge going to sigma of i. And sigma is a bijection, so there is incoming edge from sigma inverse of i. It might happen that these two uh, vertices are distinct, or they coincide like here, or even both of them coincide with i, and this is this picture. But uh, definitely nothing else can happen. And, and so, like in uh, lecture 1.6, where we talked about Lagrange theorem, uh, we can conclude, so, gamma sigma, is a union of disjoint oriented cycles. And again, so the argument is you take some point, you go by an edge going out, and you continue going, your set is finite, at some moment you will come back to your uh, path, you will hit one of the vertices, it can be only the first vertex because otherwise you contradict this part. And so eventually you see a cycle and the cycle can have no incoming or outcoming edges. So that's the argument. And, and that's pretty interesting because, I mean, this picture tells you exactly what sigma does, because what sigma does, okay, 1, 7, and 2 will go kind of in circle, 3 goes to 3, 4 goes to 4, find an exchange. For instance, from here it's completely obvious, you can see that, okay, if you take, for instance, sigma power 6, its identity, because, I mean, no matter how many times you do sigma, 3 will go to 3, 4 will go to 4, 5 and 6 will exchange, so if you do sigma even number of times, 5 go to 5, 6 goes to 6, and if you want 1 to return to 1, you need to do sigma some number of times divisible by 3, so eventually sigma power 6 is identity, and so order of sigma is, is 6. It's obvious from this picture. Okay, so um, now I want to derive a, a corollary of this observation. 
um, and and uh, the idea is as follows. So one can think of these permutations, which which we see here, as um, kind of special kind of permutations. So they are called cycles. So let uh, I one I k inside our set from one to n be certain distinct distinct elements. So a cycle, uh, and then you just write down brackets i1 up to ik inside Sn uh, is a permutation. Let me call it, I don't know, sigma, sigma, such that. So sigma is a map. I can define it kind of partially. I can say that. So sigma of uh, uh, a equal to a if a is not inside the set e1 up to ek and sigma uh, of i m equals i m plus one. So it moves i1 to i2, i2 to i3, and so on, for m uh, from 1 to less than k, and then sigma of ik equals to i1. So that's complicated definition, just tell you that, okay, so i1 goes to i2, goes and so on, goes to i1 back, up to ik, and everything else is just fixed. So this is exactly what sigma looks like. And it's called a cycle. So you see that this permutation, if you if you instead send 5 to 5, 6 to 6, this will be a cycle, and so on. So um, that's a definition of a cycle. Okay, so this is the definition of a cycle, and um, then another definition is that so cycles um, sigma one equal to i one and so on i k and sigma two uh, equal to uh, j one and so on j m two cycles inside Sn are disjoint if these two sets are, are, are intersecting by uh, only by empty set. So the set of one of them intersects the other is, is empty. So the picture is, for instance, you can have like cycle one, three, four, and then cycle to five, and everything is inside S five. So, and then we have these two cycles. So this is one cycle, let's say sigma one, this is sigma two, and then they are disjoint. So they are disjoint because these vertices, which, which so maybe it's better to say here, sort of one direction, another. So the, the vertices which move are not intersecting. And then here is the following uh, claim. So claim, which is very easy. So if sigma 1, sigma 2 are disjoint, disjoint cycles, then they commute. So with such claims, of course, formally speaking, you might want to write a definition of sigma 1, sigma 2, and then for every element check that if you do sigma 1 and then sigma 2 is the same as doing sigma 2 and sigma 1. But to be honest, it's completely obvious because you just know that when you do sigma 2, all elements, so for each element, it moves somewhere only for one of the permutations. So if you want to see where an element goes under their product, so if it is inside this set of elements defining sigma 1, then it will uh, 
move by sigma 1, sigma 2 will fix it, and the other way around, if it's inside here, sigma 2 will move it, sigma 1 will fix it, and if it's neither here nor there, it will be fixed. And so this is how you can check that sigma 1, sigma 2 equals sigma 2, sigma 1. So for instance, in S5, you can say that this cycle 1, 3, 4, which is this one, times 2, 5, is the same as 2, 5 times 1, 3, 4. So, very, very simple. Okay, so this is, uh, this is an observation, and um, what shall I say? So, if you take a permutation arbitrary, then as we discussed, its graph consists of these connected cycles. And what it means, from here it's kind of obvious that what it means is that every permutation is a product of permutations corresponding to the cycles. So this is a theorem I'm going to formulate, that every permutation can be uniquely presented as a product of non-intersecting cycles, so that the cycles are defined uniquely uh, by permutation. So let me, let me formulate it. Okay, so theorem. Every permutation in Sn can be uh, presented as a product of non intersecting oh disjoint sorry so product of product of let me say disjoint cycles and so, if you have this sigma, you can present it as this product of the cycles. Let me call them tau 1, tau 2, um, tau n. Uh, and, and the cycles, so the uh, cycles are defined uniquely up to reordering them. So for every permutation, you can write it down as a product of cycles, and the cycles are defined uniquely, there are no choices, except you can write them in different order. And the order does not matter because the joint cycles commute. So let's consider some example. And again, I want to look at some permutation, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 7, 5, uh, 2, uh, 3, 6, 1, 4, for instance, inside a 7, and then I draw these points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I just connect them, so 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 6, 6 goes to 1, 4 stays fixed, 5 goes to 7, 7 goes to 5. And so from here it's clear that my sigma, sigma is a product of cycles 1, 2, 3, 6 uh, times cycle 4, um, which is actually not, I mean, cycle 4 is actually not a cycle in a sense, I mean, it's a cycle, but it sends, you know, 4 to 4, 3 to 3, and so on, it's just identity permutation. So probably this is just, I, I'm not going to write it. So I can say 4 goes to 4, but, but you just don't need to add the cycles because they are trivial permutations. So 1, 2, 3, 6, uh, 5, 7, yeah, m maybe you can say 4, just to remember that that exists. And, and this is a presentation, so these are permutations inside S7, which, when you multiply them, give you sigma. So, um, 
Okay, how one can prove the theorem? So the proof is, is actually absolutely straightforward and uh, I don't want to write it down formally because just it will take too much time. But let me say kind of informally what happens and it's a good exercise to make it into a formal proof. So you just take gamma sigma. You take this graph which we saw. So this graph is exactly this one. And then you look at the cycles. So this is a graph. And we discussed that it is a union of cycles. So gamma sigma is a union of cycles. Uh, uh, is a union union of cycles. And, and you know, these cycles are exactly these cycles. So just take any cycle and you write them down uh, as permutations. So why this is the case? Because, I mean, if you just think what sigma does to each element, so what this permutation does to each element, if you look at the corresponding permutation, every element will appear only in one of this product of cycles. And so you just look at which, and then what it will do, it will permute it according to the cycle. So this permutation does exactly what gamma sigma does. Um, and, and thus it equals to, to sigma. Um, and uh, also... I mean, if you know that your permutation is a product of cycles, you can look at any element and find it in the graph, and then it's a part of a cycle. So you know that in a graph you will see a cycle, just because it's, it's a picture of what your permutation does. And so this is why any presentation as a product of cycles will correspond to, to this picture. Um, and so the order of cycles doesn't matter because the order of these components doesn't matter, but uh, other than that, they are defined uniquely. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to make a bridge between this cycle story and permutation story and homework problem about multiplication table. So let G be a finite group with elements G1 up to Gn is a group. And then maybe A is some element in G. And then remember, so uh, what we did, we looked at elements A, G1, and so on, A, G, N. And this is the same set of elements as set G1 up to G, N. So what it means, it means that there exists permutation sigma in S, N, such that A, G1, equals g of sigma 1 and so on, a g n equals g of sigma n. So that literally means that, that if you permute g1 and g n with permutation sigma, then you will get these elements. Okay, so uh, also we can just draw it as saying that my permutation takes g1 g n to a g1 a g n and and this is my permutation sigma. A little bit colloquially. It means if you want to see what sigma does to 1, you need to find among this element g1, and this is where it will go. So then there are two different things we associate to sigma. So first we can associate to sigma gamma sigma. And gamma sigma is a graph, just what sigma does to 1, 2, and so on. So this graph we discussed a few minutes ago. But also, remember, we constructed this graph, I guess, gamma a where we looked at every element of G and multiplied by A. And obviously this is just the same graph. So uh, what sigma does to G is exactly, you look at the element A times G and this is where sigma sends it. So basically these two graphs uh, coincide. So obviously, gamma A is just the same graph as gamma sigma. Just because, I mean, they, they, they have this absolutely same, same meaning. So what it means, it means that these permutations we obtain from the group have a special property. Remember, this graph gamma uh, A had a property that it's a union of cycles of length order of A. So it means that, uh, uh, so we have seen in lecture... 1, 6, that gamma A is a union of cycles of lengths 
order of A. Let me call order of A by some letter, let's say N. And so we, we saw that gamma A is a union of cycles of lengths N. So sigma is a product of cycles of lengths N. That's pretty interesting. So uh, from our multiplication and group, we obtain some permutations. And the statement is not all permutations. These permutations at least have a very special property. They are product of cycles of the same length. So this is just to kind of build a little bridge between two different uh, ways we saw graphs in this course. Again, one of them is every element of a permutation group permutes n elements. And the other is every uh, element in any group. When you multiply by that, you can draw the corresponding graph. And then the statement is this graph we draw is a graph of a certain permutation. And this permutation is the one appearing in homework, how you uh, how the elements of the group are permuted when you multiply them by a fixed element of a group. So, um, okay, so I recommend you to think it through. It will take some time. Uh, finally, I want to uh, make uh, two other general remarks about cycles. Okay, so remark number one. So imagine you have, for instance, a group S7. And then it has a group, a subgroup, S5. And uh, for instance, and, and the subgroup can be permutations, so sigma inside S7 such that sigma of 6 is 6, sigma of 7 is 7. So other way around, if you have any permutation of S5, you can Think of it as permuting seven elements, just fixing six and seven. And then if you just write down some cycle, for instance, cycle two, three, four, it is definitely a cycle in S5, but also with the same notation, we can look at it as a cycle in S7. Um, and in some sense, they coincide. So if you think of this as an element of S5, it sits inside S7. So what I want to emphasize here is that you should be slightly careful. If you just see a cycle written like that, it's not clear in which permutation group it sits. Obviously, it's the one containing these three elements, but uh, I mean, it might be S4, S5, S6, and so on. So uh, this cycle, uh, uh, cycle notation is, has a little ambiguity. So if you want to be formally very careful, you need to say, okay, two, three, four is a cycle, but then you keep in mind it sits inside S5. Or you can say two, three, four is a cycle and it sits in S7. So usually it doesn't lead to any confusion because if you have some formula for cycles in S5, it will be also true in S7. So uh, uh, because all the cycles just fix six and seven, and so uh, the formula will still hold. So this is why it's, it's in general not a prob problem, but you should kind of keep in mind that there is a little um, what's called abuse of notation here. Okay, so that's kind of a first remark. So remark number two is, um, okay, so if you have a cycle i1 up to ik inside Sn, so this k is known as a length. Length. And so um, this k has an important property, so, so if the cycle is denoted by sigma, then, then actually the little uh, proposition is that order of the cycle is exactly k. So, um, so proof. I mean that's trivial, but let me let me still do it. So observation number one is that if you have a cycle i1 going to ik, it's the same cycle as i2 going to ik going to i1. So I mean literally, if you just check, so i1 goes to i2 and so on, ik goes to i1, and you just draw the same kind of picture. But now you start with i2 and you get slightly dif different notation for it. So you can shift your elements of a cycle and get the same element in Sn. 
And then it's easy to see that, and of course you can continue. So it's the same as I3, going to I4, going to the D, going to IK, I1, I2. And, and, and then uh, you can uh, see that if you do sigma k in times, then I1 will go to first I2, and this will give you sigma k minus one of I2, then I2 goes to I3 and so on. So eventually you will get sigma of I k, which is I1. And so I1 stays fixed, but if I1 stays fixed, then of course, because you can just rewrite it starting with any element, it's min zeus that, that sigma k uh, of I uh, L is also I L for any L from one to k. But of course, sigma just already sigma fixes all other elements uh, in the set of n elements, so it means that sigma k is identity. And and uh, if you do so um, for l less than k, uh, you can take sigma l of i one, and that will be just i l. So it's it's not i one. And so, uh, so sigma L is not identity. And that's exactly the definition of the order. So order of sigma is, is K. Also, it's interesting to remark, so of course, a power of a cycle is also a cycle. You can see if you take, do your cycle, oh, sorry, that's not true, actually. Um, you can see that inverse of a cycle is a cycle of the same order. That's a little exercise to do. So maybe little exercise, so sigma is a cycle if and only if sigma inverse is a cycle. Okay, so, um, so let me finish the story about cycles here and uh, we'll see them again very soon. So uh, in the next lecture I want to talk about uh, the way how you can generate group Sn. Generate means you want to present every element in a group as a product of something simpler. And in particular, we represent every element in Sn as a product of transpositions, being cycles of lengths 2.